Here is the business website of a man named Tim Glister. Uh, he's British. He works for, or at least he used to work for, the British parent company of Cambridge Analytica, a firm called SCL. Uh, and you can see here that this British guy brags on his website. He touts his experience working in the U.S. in the 2014 midterm elections, specifically working to elect Tom Tillis to be a Republican senator from North Carolina. Mr. Glister says on his website, quote, in 2014, I spent three months in North Carolina with an SCL consultancy team helping Tom Tillis Help, helping Tom Tillis's successful senatorial campaign create highly targeted advertising that harnessed SCL's national database of voter issue sentiment and psychographic profiles. In an extremely crowded market, we helped the Tillis campaign create a raft of communications across platforms that engaged voters with the issues they personally cared about and delivered victory against the prediction of traditional polls. And then he, uh, on his website, he shows an ad from that election to illustrate uh, his work on behalf of, of Tom Tillis during that election, which is weird because from what we can see, this guy is not American. He's British. And American law says only American citizens are allowed to directly or indirectly participate in U.S. political campaigns at any sort of level that involves decision-making. Campaign. You can, you can hire non-Americans to lick envelopes or whatever, but hiring them to what does he say? To help Tom Tillis's senatorial campaign create highly targeted advertising, harnessing SCL's national database of voter issue sentiment and psychographic profiles? Having somebody not American do that? That might be a little much um, for American law. So first of all, this raises the question of foreigners working on U.S. campaigns. Uh, but second of all, this is about Cambridge Analytica, the data firm for the Trump campaign. And put that same quote up again. This, is, this guy is bragging about the harnessing of the Cambridge Analytica database, the national database. According to Cambridge Analytica whistleblowers, that database is the one they obtained illicitly from Facebook. They took private data from more than 50 million Americans without permission, thanks to a stealth software package put together by a professor who was jointly employed by Cambridge University and a university in Russia. Cambridge Analytica, founded and funded by Trump donor Robert Mercer, uh, worked on a whole bunch of Republican campaigns in 2014. They then went on to be the data firm for the Trump presidential campaign in 2016. Over the last week and a half, Cambridge Analytica and their parent company, SCL, uh, they've come under intense scrutiny. They've ousted their CEO. They got kicked off of Facebook. They had their London offices raided by British authorities. They've come under formal investigation, not just by British law enforcement and parliament, but also by the European Union. Uh, and then there's this. Yesterday, British Parliament held an emergency debate and took testimony on allegations that companies linked to Cambridge Analytica may have been used to, to dump tons of illegal money into the British Brexit campaign to leave the European Union. Now, part of that allegation from a disgruntled co-founder of Cambridge Analytica, its former research director, part of that allegation is that these companies linked to Robert Mercer systematically set up and used as a way to hide money that was going into campaigns. You sort of mentioned almost as an aside, you mentioned a couple of times actually, that you'd seen an in, one invoice or more than one invoice with the word UKIP on it. Is that right? Yeah. I don't, I don't have it, but I've been showing it. Okay. And, and it's, just, it's, it's just interesting to me because UKIP quite famously, most colleagues will now have absolutely no money whatsoever. So I'm just wondering when they were doing in terms of to actually sort of pay for this particular... Well, universe. you have to remember, part of the brilliance of Cambridge Analytica is that it doesn't, like, it doesn't need to make money because it's Robert Mercer's project, right? So Robert Mercer doesn't... He's a billionaire. He doesn't need to make money, right? Um, so... And, and, and further, if you, if you as an investor of a company put money as a shareholder, as an investor into that company, that's not classed as a political donation, right? That's an investment in a company that you're the owner of, right? I'm improving R&D. I'm, I'm expanding our, you know, teams. I'm, I'm doing... But you can do that more pointedly you know, and, and continue to invest purposely into a company uh, so that it can also work for particular entities at a subsidized rate or indeed in some cases for free. Um, so one of the things that I'd also just point out is that just because there's 
you know, a bill with a particular number on it was CA, it doesn't mm. mean that that's the genuine value of the work that yeah. was produced. Um, because part of the brilliance of the setup that, that Robert Mercer created was that it, it, be, it becomes very easy to actually get around campaign finance laws in terms of declarations because it's an investment. It, you know, he's a shareholder. He can invest. So what's emerging out of this investigation overseas into the workings of this company that went on to be the Trump campaign's data firm? It's an allegation from a whistleblower at the company that the way this data firm worked is that they did lots and lots of work for campaigns. But they had the luxury of not really charging very much for it. Robert Mercer, one of the richest men on earth, could afford to just fund this company up the wazoo. And then the, the company could therefore afford to charge a campaign almost nothing for their work, no matter how much work they actually did. Presto Chainzo, right? Robert Mercer's money funding these companies and entities in real life becomes Robert Mercer illegally overfunding a campaign, right? Without anybody on either side disclosing it. That's the allegation for the Brexit campaign in the UK. By implication, that's the allegation for Republican campaigns in the 2014 midterms here in the US, where they also allegedly had foreign workers coming over here to work on those campaigns as a sort of dry run, a practice run, for the 2016 presidential race. And then, of course, that's a question about the 2016 election itself, when the Trump campaign paid Cambridge Analytica just under $6 million